Axiom, the brand new premium graphite iron shaft from Fujikura with Velocore technology. And today we're gonna to be putting it to the test. We're gonna be seeing how does it feel, how does it perform, and how does it stack up against one of its biggest rivals from the steel shaft category. Let's find out. Welcome back to Elite Performance Golf Studios and today we've got another good review and test and head-to-head -head kind of of the brand new shaft from Fujikura, the Axiom Graphite Iron Shaft. So it's been long awaited this shaft from Fujikura, obviously a graphite iron shaft with the Velocore technology. It's obviously done astoundingly well in the Ventus line of wood shafts that they brought out. So today we're going to be touching on a little bit of kind of the technology, the construction of the shaft, how they work how they perform, how they feel, and then putting it head to head up against the Project X 6.5. So something of similar weight, kind of similar profile with a similar idea of what it's supposed to be doing with the ball fly and who it's kind of designed for. So it's gonna be a really interesting test for me. I can't wait to see how it feels and how it performs against Project X 6.5. And hopefully interesting for you guys to see a little bit more about this shaft and uh, yeah, exactly what it's about. So let's dive in. Right, so the Axiom 125X, obviously the heaviest, stiffest kind of offering within this range of shafts from Fujikura in Axiom. Uh, so 125 grams, it's 130 gram raw weight, but obviously you're going to be uh, butt trimming and tip trimming some of these shafts, not all of these shafts. Again, we'll touch on that later. The way that they've designed this shaft as a parallel, parallel shaft is very different to how your standard parallel shaft is designed. We'll touch on that a bit later. But yeah, you will be tip trimming and butt trimming this. So by the time you know you cut it down, you probably are going to be talking somewhere around 125 grams. So first thing that obviously springs to mind for a lot of people, graphite versus steel, is feel. So that's what we're going to be talking about first. So we've got our work cut out for us today on this hole at the Kinsale Golf and Fitness Club off the Blacks, 195 yard par three, big lake, pretty much all the way in front of us, all the way down the right side. So it's lovely. So we're going to be hitting some seven irons which today is going to be the proto concept c01 forged blade so very high end offering from proto concept obviously pretty much a, an mb muscle back blade but it's got a bit of titanium billet running throughout again this is not really a review of this club but just so you know what we're using it's 32 degrees in loft this so not the strongest not the weakest sitting right in the middle that's the head we're going to be using right see what we got Felt really good. A little bit heely apparently, but we're gonna take it. I would definitely take that. Low spin. Low spin, yeah, a little bit low heel, but decent efficiency for that. Again, from that strike, shaft and head combo, again for a sort of a bit more of a muscle back kind of construction you'd expect it not to be forgiven at all, which obviously is generally nonsense to be fair, it's just marketing, but very forgiving. Shaft felt actually really good and great shot. We've got very clean felt, but go. Stay. Let's go. Felt decent, felt good. Yeah, pretty good strike. Face was definitely not six degrees close. It's a good mystery there from quad. But yeah, I mean, it felt. I don't know, like, didn't feel much, to be honest, which is nice, I guess. Like, it just felt like not a lot of effort, felt nice for impact. Interesting, let's hit some more. Definitely a little bit of giving it straight away when you pick it up, give it the old waggle test, take it back and through. It kind of, you can see the shaft moving a little bit, got a little bit of play in it, so it's definitely not scaffold pole, even being the really heavy, stiffest offering from this shaft. It's, yeah, it's definitely got a little bit of play in it. That felt really solid. Certainly long, <laughs> this club. A lot of that is due to low spin, in all fairness. 5,400 is far too low for a 7 iron, obviously, for me, really. I know what's going on with quad, reading the face way too close. It's definitely not that close. Um, but yeah, again, really solid, ball speed, super high, felt. Yeah, again, like a little bit of a little bit of feel for impact, just a little bit, but not much. And, you know, when it comes down to this Velocore technology graphite shaft, very high end kind of 
high modulus graphite material. They're obviously they're trying to do what they've done in the Velocal wood shaft is create something that's very stable, yet feels still quite nice and not too hard work. And that is pretty much how I describe it, to be honest. It feels, like there's a little bit of give, but it doesn't feel soft, but it feels nice for impact and not hard work. It's just a nice balance. Oh, that's gone about 14 miles right. That is not the shot you want on this hole. <laughs> Definitely not the club though. <laughs> that was bad. Still felt really nice actually. Show myself, get a little bit, ooh, slightly on that one. Yeah, I mean, I'm actually really looking forward to jumping straight into the Project X to feel the difference. Obviously, we'll look at the numbers. I'll do what I always do. I'll get a good representative data shot. I'll probably take ones like that out because it's just a rubbish swing to get an idea of launch and spin and ball speed and all those kind of things as well. I'm really intrigued by, by the feel. So let's jump into Project X. All right, it's so a quick little switch into the Project X 6.5. So I've got these playing exactly the same length, exactly the same grip, and we're putting on exactly the same head. So scientific as possible possible as always. So we all know the Project X, obviously the 6.5, so that basically the extra stiff shaft, stout profile for your aggressive fast swingers, for the low launch, low spin kind of profile. We all know the Project X, 125 grams, but this is 125 gram raw shaft, so when you cut, it's actually gonna be playing a little bit lighter than the Axiom. From a swing weight perspective, they're basically identical. If anything, the Project X comes out marginally heavier, but you're talking 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of a swing weight, so hardly anything. No one's really gonna be able to feel that, and I can't feel it. Straight away when you pick it up, it probably feels a little bit stiffer, I'd say, to be honest, especially in the handle section, and maybe a little bit less give, like what I was saying with the Axiom, when you, you could kind of take it back and you can see it move in. There's a little bit of that in this, but not quite as much, so it just feels just a little bit stiffer, but it's a very similar weight throughout. Ah, oh, good, just turned it. Definitely has a different feel through impact. I can't quite put my finger on what it is yet, but it's certainly different. Again, okay, not bad that one, not my best, but not bad. I'll definitely take it as a result. Hmm, again, still similar low spin, which we expect because we know that it's unlikely the shaft's gonna massively change launch and spin. Again, we're gonna look at that at the end. I can't quite put my finger on the field. It does feel slightly different for impact, but not, not massively. Probably one of the better ones I've hit with it so far. Oh, nice. Pretty good flight, happy with that. Again, it's just reading the face too close today, which is interesting. Again, strike felt good, tiny bit heeny, but pretty good. Nice ball flight. I think it, it just feels like, I said at the beginning about kind of the density of the shaft. It's almost like you can feel the wall thickness in the graphite shafts. It just feels denser, but this feels stiffer. It's a really weird kind of way to put it, I know, but it does feel probably a little heavier and a little softer, I'd say the Axiom, like a little bit more movement in it, a little bit heavier with that kind of denser feeling to it. Well, this does feel a bit hollow, a little bit lighter throughout and a bit stiffer throughout, I would say. It's about as good as I can sum it up for you. So I'm just gonna record my reaction going back into the Axiom. I've just hit about 15, 16 shots in a row with the Project X to get numbers for the, for the data sets. Now I'm just doing the same with Axiom. Yeah, it definitely doesn't feel quite as stiff throughout. Doesn't feel, yeah, probably feels similar weight, but definitely not quite as, yeah, just not stiff throughout for sure. Yeah, definitely got more give through the swing. Again, standard pull, always my shot. Decent strike though. But yeah, definitely, definitely just a little bit softer.
Right, so I hit a lot of shots with both there, both with kind of multiple swing fields, just to make sure I'm being completely fair. Only deleted a couple with each, which is just horrific swings, really. And again, this is not a fitting video, so I'm not realistically trying to find out which one of these shafts is better for me. It's more of a try and get a good, accurate data set of how these two products perform, taking the human variable out of it. So let's quickly look at the club delivery data for them both. See, so swing speed, exactly the same to the point. Dynamic loft, tiny bit less with the Project X, we're talking 0.4 of a degree. Dynamic lie again, only 0.2 in it, hardly anything. Face a little bit more closed with the Axiom on average, but again, 0.7, so all less than a degree, which again, from a human element perspective of consistency, I'm pretty happy with. Path within 0.3 of a degree, and angle of attack within 0.5 of a degree, and average strike, you can see there, pretty similar on average. So from a club delivery perspective, the speed was pretty much the same, the path was pretty much the same, angle of attack pretty much the same, dynamic loft pretty much the same. There's not really any difference in there. We can see that I was slightly more efficient with the Axiom, so we're gonna probably see a tiny bit more ball speed, obviously, because we swung them the same, a little bit more efficient with that, leading to more ball speed. So let's jump into the ball flight data. So we do see a little bit more ball speed with the Axiom, 130.7 versus 129.2. So it's able to get a little bit more ball speed out of the Axiom. And I would probably agree with that, to be fair. I saw more ball speed out of the Axiom than I did out of the Project X. Probably maxing out about 135, 136 with the Axiom, maybe 133 with the Project X. So I was able to get a little bit more ball speed out of it. So on average, that equated to one mile an hour. Not a huge difference, but it all helps. Average launch, I did see a little bit lower launch on average of the Project X. Again, you're talking 0.3 of a degree, so it, it, it's a little bit, but it's not going to change much. I mean, 0.3 of a degree less launch. Spin, I saw probably about 100 revs between the shafts, so we could see on average Project X 53.13, Axiom 53.98. Uh, standard deviation a little bit tighter on the Axiom again, so it's a little bit tighter overall, a little bit more ball speed. So leaning towards the data side, towards the Axiom on that one. And the dispersion is a little bit tight with the Axiom as well. And two yards more carry with the standard deviation again being a little bit tighter with the Axiom slightly. So slightly more consistent across the board. A little bit more ball speed, a little bit more launch, a little bit more spin. Again, the launch and spin, to be honest, Again, that, that head's probably just not ideal for me. It's too low in spin, obviously. But from a peak height perspective, it was only five feet in it. So it's five feet higher with the Axiom, obviously launching and spinning that little bit higher. So yeah, but realistically, very, very small differences in terms of performance with those two shafts. Right, okay, so let's touch on the technology of these shafts. And when I say technology, I don't mean the Velocor, the materials and the construction of the shaft. We all know that's obviously far more high tech than your standard kind of steel shaft nowadays, way more materials, the way that they're laid and constructed, much more advanced. We know that, I'm not necessarily talking about that. What I mean is these are parallel shafts, so 0.370 parallel, so they can be tip trimmed. That obviously gives builders much more kind of versatility around how they want shafts to play. You can make them play stiffer if you want. But a standard set of parallel shafts is obviously gonna be a set of blanks that are the same length that all need to be tip trimmed according to how you want them to play. But obviously you would tip, you know, a, a four iron, say zero, a five iron, half an inch, six iron, an inch, etc., cetera. And, and you kind of move throughout the shaft like that to get them to play the correct flex. Whereas what Fujikura have done is they've made three different sets of blanks. So you've got long parallel, mid parallel and short parallel. So the long parallel, you've got two, three, and four iron. Mid parallel, you've got five, six, seven iron. And then the short parallel, you've got eight, nine wedge. Now they're all actually slightly different shafts. They're not just the same shafts. They're actually slightly different shafts. So as they go lower down, they become slightly stiffer and slightly lower in torque. So the handle gets a bit stiffer, the tip gets a bit stiffer, and they're a little bit lower in torque as well. So essentially, a little bit softer in the long iron, a little bit stiffer, as you move through the set progressively. And that's again, it's kind of like a bit of a flighted set, I guess, but it just makes the longer rhymes a little bit easier and the short rhymes more consistent, more consistency, more consistent for those scoring irons, which is exactly what we're gonna want. But that also means that they've kind of negated the fact to tip trim lots. So as you go through, so let's take a, a mid parallel, for example. So you've got 
the five, six, and seven iron. So the five you wouldn't tip trim, six, half an inch, seven, one inch. And then as soon as you go into the short parallel, it resets. So the eight you wouldn't tip, nine, half an inch, wedge, an inch. And that's how it works through. So they've kind of taken away the fact that some, some parallel sets of irons you would need to tip three, three and a half, four inches sometimes. So you're cutting away a massive chunk of this. So with the construction of that and how they've designed it is that they can really kind of get some premium materials right down into the tip section of this shaft. It just makes it play a lot more how they want, they have a lot more control over how the shaft is going to play. But it also does mean if we want to tip it a little bit more, it's getting to play a little bit stiffer, we can. So really, really smart design from Fujikura to allow them to incorporate those materials further down into the tip section for more stability, more control, and a little bit more versatility when it comes to becoming a club builder and getting the set to play how you want to play it and kind of a little bit more of a flighted set, so a little bit easier in the long irons, a little bit more accurate in the short irons, all the way throughout, like a fantastic design of iron shafts from Fujikura. So yeah, really, really good job. So there we have it, an in-depth review and performance test of the new Axiom iron shaft from Fujikura. I really hope you enjoyed that. Let me know down below what you thought. Is that what you kind of expected? Do you expect there to be more difference in the numbers and in the feel? Like, let me know. And also, let me know your thoughts on graphite iron shafts in general. I mean, this is a good discussion area at the minute as more and more graphite iron shafts start popping up within the industry. I mean, I personally believe that it's the way the industry is going to start moving towards more graphite iron shafts. As the technology gets better, obviously, more and more heavier and stiffer products are coming on the market. The reality is that they're probably still a bit too expensive at the minute when compared to steel, especially. So manufacturers, OEM offerings, still kind of sticking with the steel for now. But I do think as technology gets better and the price comes down, that's the way the industry is probably going to be going. It's more versatile, far more versatile product than steel overall. And yeah. Just got to wait that price to come down a little bit more. Um, so yeah, let me know your thoughts on that. It'd be really, really interesting. And also let me know what you want to see next. Always open for ideas. I'm always struggling to come up with stuff that I think people are really going to engage with and really want to see because a lot of my videos are a bit techy and a bit nerdy. But yeah, please do let me know what you thought, what you want to see. Please stay tuned, subscribe, like, all that good stuff. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.